Davis is a Brandeis University graduate with a Master's of Science in Health and Medical Informatics. He's a specialist with assistive technology used in day-to-day -day application in text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and concept mapping. He has almost 30 years of experience as a C-level exec and the most recent 22 in healthcare and the outpatient radiology industry. As the chief innovation officer of the Great Physician Software Company, he designed and delivered one of the first Apple applications for the IBM Merge Healthcare RIS, allowing for radiology reports to be instantly delivered to referring physicians on their iPhone and iPad. Davis is now working with MIT on some research. Hey, Norm, it's actually the one without the four. So, um, what I want to do is, first of all, everybody just stand up. Get that blood going back down to your, to your legs. Boy, stretch up, stretch out. What an awesome time. First of all, I want to thank Stan and Sarah and Norman. Um, there's no cloud without infrastructure. And uh, you all are certainly the infrastructure that allows us to, to operate. So, all right, I'm going to start. Um, next slide. Oh, do I use the clicker, Norman? No? Okay. All right. Education is the talk, and it is here. Uh, Norm, if you'd go to the next slide. Um, Thomas Friedman said that our education in America needs to be considered an economic issue. Um, we need to invest, as my 8-year-old and 10-year-old said, invest in it as if it's gold. Um, or a startup company that you know is going to turn into gold. Next, please. The problems that we're having with education, and we've all talked about it today, but the biggest problem we have is, is that it's in the printed word. We haven't changed from, from the, the, the way that we put ink on Pappas and then went Pappas, ink on Pappas to, to eyes, to brain, subvocalized to knowledge. That needs to change. Um, there... Our current method, um, okay, next slide. The reading, when you really think about it, it's a second language. There's, there's no, there's, there's no, um, there's, for the last two centuries is, is where reading has been commonplace. And, and so there's actually, next slide please, there's actually no place in the brain that evolved to reading. And, and when you start to think about that, when, when we have to train somebody how to read at a young age, we're actually repurposing a part of the brain that evolved for something else. Next slide. So, our education has failed. Our education system in this country and in the world has failed to, to, to latch on to this wave of technology that's coming in. Next slide, please. So, these are our badges of honor right now. At least we have somewhere that we can... We can um, measure, we have left brilliant people in the dark. 50% of adults can't read a book above the 8th grade level. The one that struck me is 6 out of 10 homes don't buy a book in a year. Next slide, please. So, we're also, which I talked about earlier, we need to take health, I mean, uh, healthcare and education to the next level, the digital level. And uh, some things might happen with evolution. We might lose the ability to talk because we're texting. But uh, next slide, please. And, but, the, but what people see now is that with reading being a second language, we really don't have a different way to, to, to change that. If, reading, if our education system is based off of reading and writing, then, then and, and that person can't read or that person can't write as the previous slide showed, then, then we're leaving people in the dark. And so, next slide. That's, that's, we're in 2017, we don't have a backup plan, but that's changed. Next slide. The iPhone has transformed our, our world, our world, to get us to look down even five times I heard somebody say that it's like wearing a, a bowling ball on your head. But the other side of it is, is that, that in the CB language back in the 1980s, when you used to say, break a one nine, you'd get out in the car and Amazon, Google, Facebook, Internet has, has shaken the tree 
of, of, of the foundations that we've established our, our, our knowledge based on, and now it's time to rake the leaves. Next slide. So, everybody seen Thomas Edison, and I love the fact that they brought up the, that he didn't actually invent the, the, the light bulb. He commercialized it. And that's what we've got to do with, with the iPhone and with the Internet and of things. Next slide. So, I pulled this up, and this is what we've done to ourselves. This is Frederick Douglass, and his, Frederick Douglass's wife's master started to teach him to read. And, and the one up the top, I told her, is, is the master saying to his wife that um, it will ruin him. He won't be a slave in for Frederick Douglass. And I can, I can associate with Frederick Douglass. He said it opened his eyes to the her- horrible pit that he was in. And yet, later on, next slide, it changed that. So, if reading is keeping a lot of people out of the system, then, then why not take it out? So, this woman, she wanted to swim a great distance, break a world record. She had um, divers in the water to make sure there was no sharks. And I read this in Mindset, and I thought, <laughs> gosh, if she wants to make a record, why not do it in fresh water and take the shark thing out of the uh, out of the option, right? And I mean, I can see one of the divers touching her, and just think of all the energy, the power bars that she took out of her. Next slide. So, we are beautifully and wonderfully made. Our brains are are geared toward high speed communication. We we can why you can text and, and do emails and stuff is because you can think four times faster or receive more information, four times more information than I'm speaking. So let's take advantage of that. Next slide. <clears throat> we actually can listen up to six hundred words a minute. And somebody told me the other day, is that why they have that little clip at the end of a of a drug commercial or something? I said, Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Next slide. So let's harness that. Um, what what this uh, researcher, Matthew Schnepps, who I'm working with at MIT, has, has wrote in an article in American Scientific is that we're underutilizing the auditory network of our, of our, of our, of our people, of, of us. And so let's, let's exploit that. So I say right here, so usually I didn't have the um, Apple TV next slide, but I'm going to show you. So if I want to read this, um, well, okay, so if I want to, uh, let me see here, I think I've got Eiffel Tower. So, so if I want to read this, these facts, all I have to do on, a, um, on, a, on an Apple device is to swipe down and it'll start reading to me. At 1027 a.m., found the Davis W. Graham at gmail.com send mailbox. Did you know the Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower was going to be demolished in 1909. It was saved because it was a purpose visit giant radio antenna. The Eiffel Tower. Okay, so what was really cool about this is number one is that some con artist actually sold the Eiffel Tower for scrap metal, and I thought that was neat. But if I'd never been to the Eiffel Tower, then Norm, can you click that um, hyperlink up at the top? Or I'll do it here. Either way. I can sit there and go to the Eiffel Tower, and it's upside down because of my orientation, but I can sit there and look at it, and I can go down the street. Okay, next slide. I was reading this book, um, next slide please, yeah, I was reading this book um, about, actually, so this book on, um, on th- this gentleman that went up to 10 Prince Albert Street in Glasgow, Scotland in 1950, and he noticed that the rail fence was missing, and I thought, well, I wonder if it's still missing. So I, you can click on 10 Prince Albert Street, and you can go right and stand right in front of 10 Prince Albert Street, and the rail's still missing today. Actually, when I did it, there was a kid going by texting. How I knew is I drove down the street on Google Maps, went down to the corner, looked at the, at the other gate, and there was, there was the fence on one side and the rail missing on the second. So... Um, Next slide, but I think I'm off here. So, also, if I want to go to like a two-dimensional tour, then all I have to do is is click on two-dimensional tour, have it look it up in in Wikipedia, 
or whatever, and I can stand in inside a two-dimensional torus. So now we're deep learning. And so that's, there we go, next slide. So we have gotten to the point where we need to digitally jump our education system from the analog system into the digital age. And I don't know if you've all seen this, and you can just play like a snippet of it, but this is, this is what I felt like when I went back to school, is that this is the world's longest rope swing, and it's in Moab, and um, I don't think that they're going to play it. But this person jumps off, and you start to swing underneath the corona arch in Utah. So thank you.